Well, that was tough sledding for the Mavericks. So, the Dallas Mavericks fall on the road for their first road defeat of the season. They were the last undefeated team left on the road this year. It was their, not their best start on the road. Uh, that was 2002-2003, the last time. I think their best overall was 2002-2003. They had seven straight wins on the road before losing in Indiana. So Dallas, you know, it is what it is. They went up against a red-hot team. The Celtics got pretty much handily beaten on opening night, but it rattled off seven wins in a row. They are now eight straight wins and the only one lost team in the NBA. So we know the Celtics are good. We know they're good. And this felt like a very... Yeah, it was a it was an okay game for Dallas. Like Luca did what Luca does. He goes off in the third quarter. I think he had fourteen or sixteen points in the third quarter alone. It was a very ho hum half for him in the first half, and then he kind of got cooking late. The problem is when crunch time came, that's when Kimba Walker woke up and he did a lot. I mean, Kimba Kimba was solid throughout the game. He had several three pointers throughout the game, but he started hitting late three pointers that just kept Dallas at bay. Dallas actually had a four-point lead in the fourth quarter, and the Celtics then used a 14-4 to run, and it built from there, but that at that point, that 14-4 run changed the momentum of everything, and Dallas just could never quite catch up, because then you start having great plays made from Marcus Smart. Uh, you're just, it, it's, it just got tough sledding. Like, there's not a whole lot to say. Luka got some help from some guys, not enough from others. KP, foul trouble, had a really, really forgettable evening in his return. I think he had something like four points. Let me see here. Four points, five boards, and an assist in only 20 minutes. Uh, he picked up his fifth foul, I want to say, with like nine minutes left in the fourth quarter. And I didn't see him again, but he was having just a very, very forgettable night, even shooting the ball. Didn't look particularly comfortable out there. In fact, he had a very close scare at one point in a loose ball where it looked like his leg had his foot been planted his leg would have been swiped out from under him and it could have been devastating but thankfully the leg didn't get pinned and so he was perfectly fine but shooting the ball ooh, yeah his night wasn't surprisingly the worst shooting night overall of the day but kp was just one of 11 from the field and that was one three-pointer one of one at the foul line with one block kp was not good this game he was a minus 15 overall of course, I say that uh, there really isn't anybody on the Mavericks starting lineup that did anything great. Surprisingly, the highest plus minus was Dwight Powell, who continues to frustrate the hell out of me. But it is what it is. Uh, the worst shooting in the game actually belongs to one Jason Tatum. Uh, Celtic fans, if they still want to insist that he's better than Luka, I don't know about that one, man. Like, if you want to say Luka has a ho-hum game and therefore I don't see what's so special about him. Well, Jason Tatum just had five points on one of 18 shooting. Like, the only reason I put his stat down there at all under Kimba's is because that's pretty relevant. That's a pretty shockingly bad shooting game for him. Just lit on the basket. Could not get anything to go. Unfortunately, there were enough Celtics who could get it to go. Uh, Jalen Brown, 25 points, 11 rebounds, 3 assists on 9 of 16 shooting. He did work. Marcus Smart. 17 points for him Kemba I mentioned earlier 29 points so the Celtics got everything they needed pretty much up and down the lineup like they got points from everybody in this game except for yeah two of their guys so eight of their 10 guys basically got them some really good production and that's usually Dallas's card but it did not pan out in this game you had Luka scoring for Dallas Kleba had a really nice game, 15-8. and eight. I liked what he did. He wasn't especially high on his percentages, you know, 4 of 10 shooting, 4 of 8 from 3, but the three-point shooting was a nice lift. He had two or three great looks in the corner in a row on pretty much the same drive and kick from Dallas. I think two of those came from Luka, and, you know, those, those were huge. That was helping Dallas kind of hang around. Then Dallas seized a little bit of control momentarily before the Celtics came back and snatched it away. Uh, Dwight Powell, I mentioned earlier, 12 points, five boards, three assists, six of seven shooting, 0 of two at the line though, in a pretty critical spot. And I, I don't think it changes the game or anything like that. Cause Dallas ended up taking a four point lead. So they scored six more points before the Celtics got back on the board, but it just felt like a swing in momentum where you get fouled, you go to the line and you just need to, 
you need to convert those. And Dallas's fourth quarter free throw shooting is still a little troublesome there. Uh, Luca nine of ten at the line, missed one in the later stages of the fourth quarter. That's just not something Dallas can afford in that situation. And I'm not laying it all at Luca. When you go nine of ten, it's hard to be too upset at him. But it just shows for whatever reason in crunch time, there's a weird lid on the free throws for them. Curry, man, ooh, he starts and he gets one of six shooting, zero of four from three. Twenty one minutes, two points, one rebound, one assist good googly moogly you are not going to win when you get that kind of minutes from curry and that little of production of course if i told you just kp stat line you would assume you'd be hard pressed to win so the fact that you went into the home of the hottest team in the nba on the road and played them tight for basically all but the final six minutes so you know 42 of the minutes and you were right there and it was only in the final six minutes that they really pulled away from you that says a lot. I mean, really, if you want to get technical, it was really in the last four minutes they pulled away, but Boston had a narrow lead still around the six-minute mark, and then that's kind of where it started to drag away from Dallas. Brunson had himself a pretty good game as well, 12 points, seven rebounds, two assists. I think I have six rebounds for him listed there. That's a mistake on the page. Uh, four of nine shooting for him. Uh, let me see. Yeah, sorry, excuse me. Four of seven shooting, one of two on threes, three of four at the line. DeLon Wright, 21 minutes, 9 points, 4 boards, 2 assists. Hardaway Jr., another 3 of 11 day, 1 of 7 on 3. What did I say about Tim Hardaway Jr. the other day, man? Like, he'll give you that breakout game where suddenly you're like, okay, see, right here. When he's cooking, this guy is great for us. The problem is those are few and far between, and in the middle, you're going to get a lot of crap, a lot of okay, and then you'll find every now and then those little nuggets of like, oh, well, there you go. That's great. Like his 20-point game the other night, spot on. Exactly what we needed. So this is a disappointing loss, but at the same time, I'm not upset about it. Like, hottest team in the NBA, on the road. It is what it is. This is a this is the kind of game that you penciled in, at least I did, going into the season. I said, if they could somehow steal this, this would be phenomenal. But I know that they're the underdog, and I'm not going to be upset if they somehow lose. I also said that about Denver, and they got that win, just for what it's worth. Uh, so there you go. Dallas is 6-4 and four on the season. I don't know where this is going to put them in the standing of you know highest-rated offense and everything. I know they were still hovering around that mark. 106 tonight should drop that a little bit, but I don't know, man. I, I still remain steadfast in my claim that they need something else. They need a better sixth man off the bench. It's great to have the bench mob and to celebrate – how you can have eight guys scoring double figures like last game or how we had that one game against the Nuggets where you had nine guys scoring double figures and that was only the second time in NBA history that that had ever even happened. That's all fantastic. It's wonderful. But you got to have that third guy. You have to have that guy coming off the bench who can give you big production. And consistent production is the bigger thing. I understand Tim Hardaway Jr. is paid like he is that guy, but he is not that guy. He is what we had to take on to get Porzingis. And Porzingis is going to struggle early on. He's going to have his moments of struggle. Boston was another one of those. Dallas has to figure out what to do to get him going a little bit better. I still agree with that notion as well. But at the same time, you don't want to just keep forcing it to him, forcing it to him, forcing it to him. You need to let things develop in the flow of the offense. Luka has been really good at that throughout this season, is getting the flow of everything. Only one turnover on the night for Luka, too. So even in that regard, even in one of those areas where he's been a little bit high on that negative side, he was much better in this game. So Luka, it is what it is, man. He's a walking triple-double watch. Uh, he ends up one assist and four boards shy tonight. This was actually a lower, probably, I, I would guess, his lowest rebounding performance of the season so far. But, you know, it's a physical Boston team that's going to be a force in the in the Eastern Conference. So we'll see what they can do with that. But Dallas is going to have to answer now. After this game, Dallas is going to have, I think they go right to the Knicks now. They go straight to Madison Square Garden. And we're going to find out real quick how uh, how this team can bounce back after, yeah, Thursday night at the Knicks. We're going to find out real fast how quickly Dallas can bounce back and how pissed off, basically, they are about that loss last Friday to the Knicks. If, they, if they've responded, if they can respond and get one back on the Knicks court, I'll feel better about it. I will. 
Dennis Smith Jr. should be back for the Knicks in that case, so that'll be his potential revenge game. That's something to watch. Uh, KP will probably get booed out of the garden. There might be some people who aren't mad at him, but I'm guessing it's going to be 90% people booing him. And so I'll be curious to see if he either feeds on that or if he shrinks from that. After a game like this, I would really hope that he feeds off of it because he needs that he needs to bounce back. A one of eleven game, that's that's brutal, man. That is simply brutal. You cannot you cannot have that kind of production and Dallas be able to go especially far in that case. So after that, we got uh Saturday, the sixteenth against the Raptors. That is the game that the plan is still. I will be confirming that in the next day, day or two. Uh, the plan is for me to cover that game for Dallas Sports Fanatic, be a credentialed media member, uh, get pregame and postgame locker room access, Rick Carlisle's press conference, pregame, postgame, Mark Cuban doing the whole media session thing before the game, all that locker room access, you name it. So I should on the next maps fast break, which I haven't been doing those as of late because I've been focused more so on the actual game summaries and postgame shows themselves. But I should have some video for you guys. I'll probably try and do on Sunday just to show off some of that and to give you those quotes and context and everything. But we'll see. This is going to be I'm not I'm not upset or concerned about the start. I keep saying I understand when you see your team how they are, how good they can be, you have a tendency to kind of shift the goalpost of your expectations. I'm trying not to do that with this team. Last year when we saw how good Luca was, it completely changed the perception of our of our rebuild. We went from saying, "Hey, three three years away from being able to you know get back in the postseason, like being expected to be in the postseason, um, or at least right there in the thick of the race, uh, probably five years away from contention if we can get one or two more parts and if Dennis can keep developing." No, once Luca came in, that entire window moved closer like it was a huge step towards that window opening and at that point it was like okay uh Dennis we don't have the time or patience to develop you at this point we want to give the keys to Luca pretty much entirely and we need to get assets for him and we know that we struggle in acquiring free agents so we're going to put that focus instead on trading you Dennis for a major asset and they got that with Porzingis and he's been hit or miss uh, shine or struggle pretty much throughout the year and we need to see if he can get back on track again I'm going to be patient in that regard because I said going into the season I would be patient and I wouldn't be swayed by a single game here or there and now that we've got 10 games of data we've got the first look and it's largely confirmed what I thought which is bright moments and some bad moments the team has been that way as well so six and four through ten I said 500 through 10, and I would be happy. There you go, 6-4. and four. So we'll see how this team can do. We'll see what the next, uh, the next chunk of games has in store for them. Like I said, you got uh, the Raptors on Saturday. Then you got to go, let's see. Then you host the Spurs, the Warriors, the Cavs. The, the Warriors don't look like the Warriors of old by any means. The Cavs are the Cavs. The Spurs, I don't know about them, but you're at home at least. Then you go, I'm sure Eastside will be happy to talk about this, to the Rockets, November 24th. So things are going to get real interesting for this team. I'm overall encouraged, though, by what I see. So don't sweat it. It's a 10-point loss on the road, but it's the first loss on the road on the year. Uh, the teams that have beaten you, you only got one stinker, only one game where you just felt like you were embarrassed. All the others, you were right there into the final minutes at least. This is the first time they lost that wasn't like the Knicks, other than the Knicks embarrassment. This is the first time they lost where they were going against a really good team and were just one or two plays away in the final two minutes from, from winning. So hang tight. Don't sweat it. Until next time, that's my time. Thank you guys for watching. I'm DDP. Don't forget to like this video if you like it, share it, subscribe, all that. But above all, remember... Every legend was once a prospect. Salute.